Okay, so when we last left off, we had programmed the play pause functionality and a few other items on the control panel. And today what we're going to do is we're going to finish everything out, starting with the programming of the closed caption toggle. Now this one is much less uh, long winded than the play pause toggle. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to our slide master, go to control, we're going to select our closed caption icon and then we're going to create a, uh, a trigger here that is adjust variable. Sorry, we're going to toggle player display captions when the user clicks CC and then click OK. And so now we have our closed caption toggle. It was much more straightforward. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to program our control, uh, our progress meter, which is up here, this white rounded rectangle. And to do that, what we're going to do is copy this rounded rectangle here. So select and copy that. And then in the normal state, we're going to paste that and you'll need to line it back up. And what we're going to do is we're going to select format and adjust the width here so that it's 30 and 30. Great. And then we're going to bring that down about one pixel. So we want the zero axis, actually, we'll bring it down to zero axis to be zero, or the x axis to be zero and the y axis to be two. Excellent. So then what I want us to do is from the shape fill, we're going to select any of the colors that you prefer. So I'm going to select this green and then we are going to duplicate. We're going to click done. All right. And then with the normal selected, duplicate the state and you can call it whatever you want. So I'm going to call it two. And what we want to do here is we just want to add 30 pixels to the width. So this one's going to be 60 and then we're going to keep doing that. So we've got three, this one's going to be 90, duplicate four, this one's going to be 120 and then five will be 150, whoops, make sure that you have your colored uh, selection chosen. Oh shoot, hang on, we need to, <laughs> 150, the white should all be 150. Okay, make sure that we've got all of them set to 150, oopsie. And then we're going to make sure that the green is set to adding 30 each time. So this one we've got 90, then we should have 120 here and the white should be, go back, the white should be 150. Then we've got 120. And then for the last one, white again should be 150. <laughs> and then we've got 150. So now we have our progress meter where it goes from normal through to five. <clears throat> so then we want to navigate back to our clean layer and we want to create some triggers. So we are going to add a trigger that changes the state of the object progress and we're going to <clears throat> set the state to normal when the timeline starts. If, so on this side, yeah, and then if under the slide numbers menu you'll see menu slide number. So we want to find the menu dot slide number is equal to a value of one. Okay. 
Then what we're going to do is we're going to copy that trigger and paste it. And we're going to change it to, we're going to change normal to two. And if the value is two. And we're going to do that all the way up to five. Change it to three. The value is three. And then change it to four, the value is four. And change it to five, if the value is five. So now we have all of our progress meter programmed. So now the next thing that we want to program on our control panel is going to be our print icon. So select your print icon and what we need to do. So this is a very rudimentary way of, of doing a, a print screen and uh, you can do it a few different ways. So if you were to say print a certificate, we can, we can put different code in to do that. But this is, I feel the most reliable way to create a print function without having to worry about um, dumping in any extra HTML or anything additional into the storyline output. So what we're going to do is select our print icon and then add a trigger. And we are going to execute some JavaScript. And it's very basic JavaScript. So then <clears throat> when you put in execute JavaScript the action, you'll see a red JavaScript. That's indicating that you need to enter in some JavaScript. So click on that and then we're going to put window.print, open parentheses, close parentheses, semicolon. And then we're going to click OK. And then OK again. So now we have that programmed. Now the menu layer uh, is something that is on the control, control layer and we need to create the mechanism that's going to close the menu. So the first step here will be to insert a hotspot. All right. Oh, here we go. So insert a hotspot and you're going to draw it over your menu item here. And then what I want you to do is cut it. So you've decided where you want to place it. And with the, uh, the next thing that we want to do is go to the menu layer where you can't see where the actual control is. So you can't see the icons on the menu layer. And then we're going to paste that in the exact same spot. And then add a trigger that says hide layer, this layer, when the user clicks, hotspot one. Okay, so now we have our close mechanism. And so for the purpose of this project, we're going to have a menu item that corresponds with the six slides that we have in the applicable, uh, in, in the available project. So, the next thing that we want to do is open up our manage project variables panel and we're going to add six text variables. So go to your project tab and we're going to add title one and the default value will be menu item one and then I'm going to copy menu item. Okay, title two, menu item two, Title three, menu item three. We're going to do six of these. All right, so now we have our text uh, variables here. And what we're going to do is we are then going to click OK and we're going to create a text box. So insert and it's going to be text box. And we're going to create it over our menu. So say right here, then we're going to insert a reference variable and we're going to put title one, copy that, paste that. Change the reference to title two, copy and paste that. And we're going to do this six times as well. So now we have all of our menu items. And then to get the menu to work, you need to create a trigger for each of them. So for the purpose of this interaction, it's going to be 
um, per slide. So title one is going to be a jump to slide and it will be one when the user clicks the text box. And then we're gonna do that for all of them. So you can select your next text box, then copy and paste this trigger jump to slide two when the user clicks text box two. All right, so now we actually have everything programmed. So we have our menu, we have our help, our print function, progress meter, closed caption, previous and next buttons, and the play pause. So now all we have to do is preview and test. So let's preview that. As you can see, we have our project. And so if I click the closed caption icon and then start navigating through, you will see one, the progress meter changing, two, the closed captions are going to appear down here. And we're going to navigate through. So finish watching everything populate, then we'll use the menu, and then we're gonna do a print function. So let's go. All right, so we've got closed captions. Space is amazing. Progress meters working. Has a slow of all the planet, neutron stars are the dead. The moon has no atmosphere. Excellent. Which means there is no and then we're space. going to jump around using our menu items. There so we've no got the first slide, space. second space slide, the third slide. Has a slow axis then we also the have a print function. So it's printing the screenshot and for the optimal layout we want landscape. So that's really all it takes to create a custom user interface in Articulate Storyline. If you have any questions at all, please don't hesitate to reach out. I'll do my best to answer any and all questions that you have. Thanks.